Okay, well, I understand that some of you may have some questions for me based on statements that were made on radio this morning, so I'm, I'm happy to field those questions. Minister, can you confirm whether or not the restrictions or laws that govern those restrictions will be lifted soon? Uh, no, I can't confirm any specific date. What I did say this morning is that I have uh, recommended a further 28-day extension, which would take us through to the first week of April. Um, this is a live consideration for us in relation to when the appropriate time will be to lift that a major emergency declaration. I don't think that time is now, but clearly we are closely watching. So it's possible that this current application for an extension may be the last one, but we'll have to assess the circumstances as we move through the next 28 day period. So it definitely won't be before the 1st of April? Well, it could be. Uh, one aspect or one option is for uh, no further request for an extension to be made. Uh, the other alternative is that I can revoke the direction uh, the declaration at any time. So it really is a matter of assessing the circumstances as we continue to work through dealing with uh, COVID-19. Commissioner, what will it take to measures? Well, I think the most important factor is uh, confidence that a hospital system is coping with positive cases within the community. Uh, the indicators at this point in time uh, suggest that is the case for the time being, and we're obviously hopeful that it continues that way. Uh, the other factor is, of course, that uh, uh, if there is a prevailing requirement for the directions that are in place to continue to exist, then we obviously have to take that into consideration. But there are options available to us in terms of uh, revoking the declaration and managing, managing this under the Public Health Act as well. So there are a range of considerations that need to be taken into account and there's nothing that is immediately apparent at this time that would see a change in the next 28 day period. Commissioner, there's been some calls for a review to be undertaken into the Emergency Management Act. Would you support that review taking place once the declaration is lifted? Uh, yes, I would, and I think uh, the current government has indicated that at the conclusion of the major emergency declaration that a review of its application would occur, and I think that's entirely appropriate. And it is usually the case with any major emergency incident that there is a review of how the Act was applied and the decisions that were made, so I'd certainly support that. So when you, like, you mentioned that there might be some baseline restrictions that would stay in place, did you mean that um, to take place after the mandate is removed? Sorry, the emergency declaration is removed? Well, there are two levels to this. Um, we have undertaken to uh, reconvene uh, the COVID Ready Committee throughout the course of uh, this week and next week. At the end of next week, uh, there is a commitment to actively consider uh, relaxing more, more of the restrictions that are currently in place. And it may be that those relaxations of restrictions mean that we hit what we might describe as a baseline level of restrictions, which might be in place for some, some length of time after that end of the, that second fortnight, the fourth tranche of, tranche of relaxations. It could also be the case that if we were to revoke the major emergency declaration, then there may be some base level requirements that need to exist, such as quarantining and isolating people, uh, potentially the use of QR codes and other measures that provide SA Health the ability to properly manage COVID-19. Whether or not that is dealt with under the Public Health Act or some other mechanism is yet to be seen. On that point, when do you consider using restrictions for parents of children who test positive at school? The restrictions or close, the, con the uh, close contact, contact requirements. Well, that really is a matter for um, SA Health to consider and provide advice on, uh, because you're talking about how the disease or the, the virus acts and the best way of preventing the virus from spreading in the community. If there are opportunities to make changes to close contact requirements, that will be considered by SA Health, particularly Professor Spurrier. And she's indicated last week that that would be something that she'll be doing probably over the next couple of weeks. So is the impact on families, 14 days quarantine, is that being considered as well then? All things are on the table, um, but it does depend on uh, SA Health determining what is appropriate given the behaviour of the virus and the way it's spread within the community and whether there are opportunities with the number of active daily cases we have and the number of people who are close contacts to make changes to those requirements. I'm not in a position to provide advice on that at this time. So can you give us a bit of a timeline on when you think the emergency declaration will cease? No, I think I've pretty clearly answered that, that it's actively being considered. We have requested another 28-day extension, and over the course of that 28-day period, we'll be monitoring the requirement for that declaration to remain in force. It may be, and I'm not saying this is the case, but it may be that we request another 28-day extension in early April. but. Uh, I think that the key takeaway is that we are actively considering this. 
South Australia is doing very well in terms of managing COVID. Our hospital admission numbers look pretty good at this point in time and we're hopeful it continues that way. Um, so we are on virtually on a daily basis considering our position. And that extension is uh, a main part of that is because of the, uh, the election coming up. Is that you explain that on um, radio? Yeah, the, going through that the certainly the forthcoming election is a consideration uh, because we will have people who are continuing to quarantine with COVID-19 or be people who are required to isolate as close contacts. So uh, in order for those people to be able to access a postal voting pack after 5pm on the Thursday before the election, we need a lawful mechanism that enables them to do that. That mechanism will be the major emergency declaration, which allows me to override certain pieces of legislation. And in this case, it will be the cutoff time for accessing a postal vote. So I see that there is a need to maintain it at this point in time as we go forward. But there are other factors, such as the need to quarantine people, which we rely on the Act. And we still do have some mandates in place for particular sectors within the South Australian community. Can I just clarify, on radio as well, you were asked about um when the emergency management declaration ceases, then that would mean things like the vaccine mandates would also stop and so there was a need for other legislation to then be used to continue those mandates. So is there a potential that when the declaration ceases, some people who are not vaccinated, who work in health, for example, could come back to work and be lawfully there? Well, that will be a matter for SA Health. The, the, the reality is that when the declaration ceases, when it's either revoked or is not extended, all of the directions that are issued under that declaration become void. They no longer exist. If there is a workforce or a sector within the South Australian community that believes it's necessary for their, their, their employees to be vaccinated, they will have to consider what other options are available to them, whether it be a management direction or industrial laws or work health and safety legislation they utilise to enable them to ensure their workforce is vaccinated, but it won't be under a direction uh, issued under the Emergency Management Act. Is that work underway? Is departments like SA Health or the Department for Education looking at that? Um, I would expect so, yes. Yeah. My team are liaising with the different sectors that are utilising mandates for their workforce at this point in time, and that work is ongoing. Okay. Just looking into the north, how dangerous is it for campers out and out, out back? Well, look, I think it's, uh, it's too early to make any general comments in relation to what sort of dangers exist. Obviously, there is an element of preparedness, um, uh, weather conditions, uh, unforeseen circumstances that might uh, present to any travellers who are out in the far north or remote parts of South Australia. Uh, we always encourage people to be as prepared as possible and uh, tap into the most up-to-date relevant advice in relation to the conditions they might be entering. At this point in time, it's too early to make any calls in relation to the circumstances. Obviously, we're preparing, preparing a report for the coroner and we'll be doing our own inquiry in relation to the circumstances that led to this tragic death. A tragedy like this, I mean, how does it impact a small, tight-knit community like Roxanne? Well, I think, I think anyone can appreciate when you have a small community, close-knit community, um, the, the loss of any, any member of that community uh, has, a, has a significant impact uh, in circumstances like that. I believe it would be compounded. And it's not just about community members, it's about the police and emergency services that attend, uh, conduct the search uh, and work on the investigation in relation to the circumstances leading to the death. These sorts of things do have a significant impact on small communities. Okay, thanks ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. See you.